This is my cat, Bo. Bo lives a pretty standard life. His life consists of getting food, getting lots of pets, and living in a warm home. But there are some things Bo does that just aren't normal. He rarely cares for treats or food or even to explore much. He enjoys going out, but never really leaves my side when we do. When I leave the house to commute to college, he'll often sleep under my bed or get mild separation anxiety. Bo's favorite pastime, at least when I'm around, is curling up on my desk next to me and watching me build my airplanes for YouTube. Without a doubt, some of that information must have rubbed off on him. So, my YouTube audience, I decided it was time to let him build a plane for me. Before we did that, however, I needed to see if he had enough general knowledge to understand the complexities of building a plane. So I prepared him for a verbal test. The first thing I asked him was, Bo, what height is the semi-major axis of Earth's orbit? His response? Au, spelt using the English lexicon, is AU, or an astronomical unit. The Earth's semi-major axis is exactly one astronomical unit, so Bo got that one correct. Next, I wanted to see if he knew his history. So while we were outside, I asked him, Bo, who founded the People's Republic of China in 1949? His response to this? Bo knows that Mao Zedong is largely credited with founding the PRC after his forces defeated the nationalist government of China at the end of post-World War II segment of the Chinese Civil War. This means that Bo knew his history. So, Bo seems to know a little bit about history and a little bit about space, so I think he's good to take a crack at building an airplane. Although there were some setbacks, of course. Bo had no opposable thumbs, nor was he fully capable of speaking the English language if it didn't sound like meow, so therefore there was no good way of translating his aeronautical genius into practice. Bo didn't like treats that much, or eating food in an unusual place, so I couldn't incentivize different options with treats. I couldn't let him naturally choose in unusual areas either. His habit of l only laying in specific spots on my bed or desk or wherever meant I couldn't wait for him to lay on an option either, and he was too afraid of the outside to leave my side, meaning the choice would be biased. So I had to come up with something new. The only option I really had left was depriving him of his normal habits. You see, normally, the only reason Bo leaves my desk or bed is to get food in the kitchen or use the litter box, meaning he has to exit through a doorway. So I used this gateway as a selection board for Bo. I cut up a 2x4 with some tools and working space I borrowed for the bottom of the gateway. I put this 2x4 in the gateway threshold to ensure that Bo didn't just follow his normal habits when exiting the room of bolting through the right side of the door. Next, I got a set of strings and taped it to the top of my door frame to form dividers. Between those dividers is where I lay out my options, which were only written down on disposable sticky notes. It wasn't exactly high-tech or reusable by any means, but it was simple and got the job done. So, borrowing some tools and operating space from my family, I cut up a 2x4 and placed it on the threshold of the doorway. The questions would start pretty broad and narrow their way down only somewhat as they take much of the communication workload off Bo and onto my aircraft's design. But without further ado, with our Bo measuring device set up, it was time to ask him some questions. Test number one, objectives. The first thing I wanted Bo to choose was the purpose of this aircraft. It'll give us a great idea of what sort of looks and purpose we'll get with the vehicle. So from vintage props, to general aviation and LSA, airliners, fighters, and everything in between, we gave Bo six starting options and caught him on the way into the room. He was weirded out by the device for the 2x4 a little bit, but it did a great job of breaking his habits, which is exactly what I wanted. Bo chose to build a fighter slash attack jet. I think that's because I build a lot of fighters on my channel and it must have rubbed off on him a little bit. After this, now that I knew it would be a semi-modern fighter slash attack jet, I picked a few sizes for him to use. The smallest being the F-5 as it is a relatively small fighter jet, and the largest being TU-128 size as that is considered the biggest fighter jet. I'd say it's a pretty fair size bracket. Bo chose an F-5 size fighter jet as he immediately went for the 15 meter length size bracket. Those were all the questions I could ask him for the night, and I'd be pretty busy tomorrow, so I wouldn't get too many questions done. Question number three, however, I did get done that day. I caught him on the way into my room. The options were one through four for number of engines, and despite no fighter or attacker just ever having this many, I thought it would be reasonable in case Bo might have wanted a few more. And he ran through the three option. A rather unusual choice, but I believe that would be the only choice we'd get done in the morning. After I got home, I managed to get two more questions out of him regarding the aircraft. 
In terms of wing shape, Bo had everything from tapered, straight, reverse swept deltas swapped with lurks, everything a cat could really need for any sort of even non-conventional wing shapes. Bo ended up choosing nothing but straight tapered wings, a tail, and canards as both the wing and tail structure of the aircraft, meaning we'd have control surfaces in the front and behind the main wings. The main wings would not have any fancy vortex generator and they'd just be tapered, kinda like the F-104. As a final question about the general purpose of the aircraft, instead of asking him specific questions on engine temperatures and inlet dynamics, I simply asked him for which speed regime he wished the aircraft to be designed for. This meant I had full control over the minor details such as engine dynamics, inlet dynamics, and some of the area ruling and shape, which by the way, a decent area ruling with a tri-engine with sheer tapered wings and all of this would be impossible. Kinda like why the F-4 Phantom can barely break Mach on the deck despite being Mach 2 capable. You see, the aircraft drag coefficient peaks at the sound barrier. That's kinda why it's called a barrier after all. By technicality, it is proportionally easier once you get far enough past the sound barrier. Not by the standpoint of sheer drag, of course, only drag coefficient. A poorly area ruled aircraft would have an astronomically higher peak drag coefficient than something well area ruled, meaning that when you're flying at sea level, at the sound barrier, your drag will be significantly higher than other planes going the same speed. It's why some planes with very little thrust, such as the Buccaneer, could still get to transonic speeds literally inches away from the ground, while the fastest of fighter jets such as the MiG-25 and F-15 could only go maybe 0.2 Mach faster than it at sea level. At altitude, however, that changes a little bit. Obviously, there's a lot less drag at high altitudes because of this lower air density. It makes getting past that barrier a little bit easier, and it means that engine's performance starts to matter a lot more than area ruling at altitude. Since Bo wanted this thing to be Mach 2 to 2.5 capable, I was praying that the engines I would build would be enough to sustain somewhere in that range for a semi-reasonable amount of time. This thing was, again, shaping up to be an interceptor more than anything. So let's talk about the build a little bit. Based on the speed, shape, and overall requirements of the vehicle, I designed it as a late gen 3, early gen 4 fighter jet in both aesthetics and technology. Things like active slats, basic fly-by-wire, and active canards were added to the vehicle as a result. In terms of the tail, I didn't really feel like asking him for a specific shape, I simply made different tail shapes while Bo was next to me to see which one he was most interested in. Bo was awake to glance over at the Bok tail I designed for the vehicle, so I ultimately chose that for a tail. The elevated tailplane and straightish tapered wings really gave the craft an almost modernized F-104 aesthetic, which was rather wild. For the high speed dynamics Bo requested, after burning low bypass turbofans were added for maximum thrust. I also designed the vehicle with ramp intakes designed to optimize inlet dynamics for supersonic speeds whilst also staggering the ramps between each engine in order to almost fruitlessly attempt to reduce the roughness of our cross-sectional area. On top of this, I want to talk about how weird the landing gear was on this aircraft. Like seriously, I needed to get an F-16 style front gear because there just wasn't enough room in the front of the aircraft for a landing gear. And plus the weight would be a huge issue with such a long landing gear on the nose. And then on top of that, the rear landing gear ended up blending into tail booms to give us a little bit of extra lift as well as extra structural support for the tail of this vehicle, and just like that it was technically a twin boom. Truly a mark of my engineering at this point, but that would unfortunately just make the area ruling a little bit worse because of course it would. But anyways, I ended up adding that F-16 style front gear which made the plane almost look... goofy I guess? I mean I guess it just follows the bow proportions pretty well of looking very goofy. Speaking of which, by the way, I would be painting the plane to have the same general color scheme as Bo, as I would be designing the plane to be black with a white underbelly. The paint scheme wouldn't be anything massively impressive due to time limitations, but I also wanted to put minor details about the plane, the cat maintainers, and the cat pilot who would clearly be operating this vehicle on it. Because of Bo's choices, I imagine that if cats ruled the world, this is what their fighter planes would look like, so it only makes sense for me to add cat maintainer notes around the vehicle. I ended up stealing cockpit assets from my previous builds with some original parts for the vehicle, once again due to time constraints. The last question while I was building this was the weaponry on it. While it would obviously have radar and hardpoints, I wanted Bo to decide what sort of guns it had. Bo decided to include 30mm cannons with a moderate rate of fire similar to what I believe the Russian 30mm aircraft cannons would be like. Including this in the design was a bit difficult as there was basically zero room left, but I found a place for the cannon behind the front landing gear with ammunition belts presumably going around the ducting of the bottom of the engine and into the upper fuselage, where we still had just a little bit of leftover room inside the vehicle. I also added a little ram air cooling at the base of the weapons as well for just that bit of added detail. And after that, I was complete with the plane. 
I'll see you guys in the air. Let's fly out and see what it's like to fly a cat's aircraft. This is Bose Aircraft, a tri-engined interceptor. The powerful engines and ramp intakes ensure good high-speed performance while its exceptional thrust at low speed makes time to climb easy. The powerful nose radar, easy-to-use controls, and fly-by-wire ensure that whoever may be piloting this aircraft is always in control. On the deck, its top speed is approximately 1.15, but at altitude, Bose plane can reach speeds of up to Mach 2.4. Due to the canards and control system, Bose plane can pull some insane AOA. So you've heard of the good things now, let's talk about the bad. Its wing structure, firstly, is horrid for controls at any speed, resulting in over-responsiveness at high speed, which is luckily helped by the fly-by-wire, but it also has a pitiful sustained turn rate. Despite having a nearly 1 to 1 press to weight ratio, this thing turns worse than any modern fighter aircraft, not even outpacing things like the Phantom and Instantaneous, nor MiG-21 and Sustained. Its heavy weight, poor wing shape, lack of vortex lift, and inherently unstable tail plus canard design is a terrible combo, especially for a Mach 2.5 interceptor. It lacks the wings to be maneuverable, yet lacks the shape to be high speed as well. The tri-engine setup would also make maintainers cry, which is why I kept the middle engine on the bottom and all cowlings have a large surface area for maintenance to access. Unfortunately, the boat plane just isn't that good, but that's okay. It's definitely better than some other designs I've seen, and as mentioned, Bo isn't exactly an aerospace engineer here. My question is, what do you guys think of Bo's plane? Did I do a good job translating his options onto the plane? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This video was made thanks to the votes of the members on my Discord server. If you want to vote on my next videos, feel free to join my server at the link below and grab the role highlighted on the screen. That's all for this time folks, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye!